Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful winter day here in, uh, where are we? Uh, somewhere in the paradise outside of Dade City, Florida on this gorgeous Friday morning, February 28th, 2020. A little bit chilly down here in the state of Florida today, but I think there's a blizzard in my place in upstate New York, so I will not complain. But anyway, you have stumbled into Collapse Chronicles. My name is Sam Mitchell. This is my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza. And as much as this uh, grieves me to say, Sancho and I need to uh, pack up my gas-sucking truck and uh, my new trailer and head back to Austin, Texas. Uh, let me tell you how excited I am by that. But before I go start that sad task to head out of here back to Texas, do what I do every Friday morning, and that is go over here to mongabay.com, uh, what I guess you would call my favorite environmental newsletter here from Rhett Butler and the boys and girls out in San Francisco. Uh, for 20 years, uh, Manga Bay has been traveling around a collapsing planet, bringing us the news of the week. And this is what is going on the last week of February 2020. I'm going to put my little co-pilot down here. All right, we're going uh, to uh, start out in the corrupt, collapsing country of Indonesia. Manga Bay uh, brings us a lot of Indonesian news where we see the surprising headline, Call for Prosecution of Indonesian Politician Who Kept Endangered Baby Orangutan as Pet. Yes, conservations are calling for a district chief in Indonesia to face charges after he was found to have kept a baby Tapanuli orangutan. Yes, as a pet and then released it into the wild unsupervised. Uh, when he was caught with it, he just went and dumped it out in the forest, keeping an orangutan as a pet is punishable up to five years in prison. However, there have never been any prosecutions of perpetrators who tend to be influential figures such as politicians and military officers. The uh, baby is expected to die if it encounters wild orangutans. Yep, okay, from Indonesia to the poster child of the collapse of a planet, let's go over there to Brazil, where we find a barrage of mining requests targets Brazil's isolated indigenous peoples. Do you think so? Nearly four thousand requests have now been submitted for mining activities on 31 indigenous reserves and 17 other protected areas in Brazil according to uh, data from uh, the Socio-Environmental Institute and the National Mining Agency the targeted areas are home to 71 known isolated indigenous communities, uh, a group whose population is already considered one of the most vulnerable in the country. The new requests are part of a wave of sweeping measures led by President Jair Bolsonaro to clear the way for widespread exploitation of indigenous lands for mining, oil, natural gas, hydroelectric plants, ranching, and more. Uh, 
while deforestation in the Amazon increased by an average of 25% last year and by 80% on indigenous lands, deforestation rates in areas where isolated tribes are present rose by 114% last year uh, compared with 2018. Compared with 2017, the deforestation increase last year was 364%. Over 2017. Yep. And so I guess next to that story we have a little bit of karma where we see Amazon tipping point puts Brazil's agribusiness and energy sector at risk. It's called uh, getting what you deserve. Scientists are sounding the alarm. The Brazilian Amazon is dangerously close to, or may already be, hitting a disastrous rainforest to savanna tipping point. With heightened drought driven by regional and global climate change, rapidly rising deforestation, and more numerous and intense wildfires. Overshooting the Amazon tipping point would, read will, not only be cataclysmic to Amazon rainforest biodiversity and release massive amounts of forest carbon destabilizing our planet's climate further, it could also devastate Brazil's economy. Hallelujah! by depriving agribusiness and hydroelectric uh, energy production of water. Signs of deepening drought are already evident. Uh, the nine and a half billion dollar Belo Monte Mega Dam, for example, is already seeing greatly reduced seasonal flows in the Zingu River, a trend to expect it to worsen. Uh, potentially making the dam economically unviable while also threatening the proposed Bellow Sun gold mine. Uh, there you go. Poor miners. Uh, so as long as we're talking about hydroelectric dams, uh, in case you're unaware of this, we're going to the whole planet now. We're going to jump from Brazil to the entire planet here. Past and future tropical dams are devastating to fish the world over. Hmm. <clears throat> Most research on the ecological impacts of tropical dams does so one dam at a time. But a new landmark study attempts to connect the dots globally by analyzing tropical dam impacts on freshwater river fish around the world. Uh, good Lord, so, uh, I mean, this is a major study. What is the, uh, the bottom line? Scientists found that biodiversity hotspots, including the Amazon, the Congo, the Salween and Mekong watersheds, are likely to be hardest hit with river fragmentation potentially averaging between 25 and 40 percent due to hydropower expansion underway in the tropics. Uh, dams harm fish ecology via river fragmentation, species migration prevention, reservoir and downstream deoxygenation, seasonal flow disruption, and blockage of nurturing sediments. Drastic sudden fish losses due to dams can also destroy the commercial and subsistence livelihoods of indigenous peoples. 
do you think so? So, Manga Bay's featured video of the week is Manga Bay explains how do roads affect biodiversity in forest. Take a wild guess how roads affect the biodiversity in forest. Uh, anyway, so Manga Bay has their own YouTube channel. I think you can go over there and find that video. All right. Uh, here is an article on a on some kind of llama you have never heard of getting ready to go the way of the uh, dodo bird. This are I don't know if it's pronounced Wanako or Wanako. I guess Wanakos are considered critically endangered in Bolivia and Paraguay. Fewer than 200 exist in Bolivia and as few as 20 are now uh, still surviving in Paraguay. Wanakos are threatened by habitat loss and poaching. Yes, they st are still clinging on in the Chaco an eco-region that is one of the most heavily deforested areas on the planet. Uh, anyway, we can kiss goodbye the Wanako. Uh, Alright, from Wanakos to Monarch Butterflies. How are they? I haven't heard about the Monarch Butterfly census in 2020. The Western Monarch butterfly numbers critically low for second straight year. The latest annual count of Western Monarch butterfly numbers at their overwintering sites on California's Pacific Coast have revealed a second consecutive tally of less than the critical threshold of 30,000. Uh, entomologists say that figure may be the tipping point for the species below which the population decline would accelerate into a downward spiral. A major threat to the butterflies is the loss of suitable habitat. Twenty of their overwintering sites have been damaged by human activity in the past five years alone, and the vast majority of the remaining 400 sites still lack protection. Yepper, so much for the monarch uh, butterflies. Here is a hilarious knee slapper of the week about BlackRock Corporation's commitment to responsible investing. <laughs> oh yes, BlackRock announced last month it would place climate at the center of its investment strategy. Oh yeah, please. Uh, I knew we could not get through a weekly roundup without the coronavirus rising its ugly head. China beefs up wildlife trade ban as coronavirus outbreak intensifies. Oh, yes. Uh... That goes right up there with BlackRock's commitment to uh, responsible investment. Uh, oh yeah, let's see. Here's another one. Coronavirus and trolls take a toll on shrimp. On shrimp fishery in Indonesia. The Indonesian government has temporarily restricted trade with China uh, in the wake of the global outbreak. Uh, the move has hit the shrimp fishing uh, industry. 
uh, which is highly reliant on the Chinese market. All right, so we have some more good news about the coronavirus, which I've mentioned. Uh, anything the coronavirus can do uh, to bring down global industrial civilization, three cheers for the coronavirus. Uh, all right, what's going on with marine mammals in the northern Bering Sea. Uh, so this is a four-year study of uh, up there of five species of endemic Arctic marine mammals listening to, literally listening to their vocalizations bottom line, their findings showed consistent seasonal distribution and movement patterns. Uh, anyway, guys, this gets way too technical, way too quick, and uh, I have to move uh, on. Sorry. Uh, okay, here is California fighting tropical deforest. I did not realize there were any tropical forests in California. So, all right, California has introduced a bill which would require any contractors supplying the state with to comply with strict rules against tropical deforestation. Uh, the new bill would apply to a wide range of products including palm oil, beef, soybeans, and timber. A similar bill stalled and died last year, but its sponsors are optimistic that this time around it will fare better. Yes. Uh, okay. All right, uh, another good news coronavirus story. Uh, corona, we just heard about the shrimp industry. What's going on with coronavirus in Vietnam? Coronavirus outbreak hits Vietnam's timber sector. All right, Vietnam exported nearly $1 billion worth of timber products to China in 2019 but the timber trade faces a steep decline of the, as a result of the coronavirus eight outbreak. Uh, there were 93 Chinese-owned companies operating in Vietnam's timber uh, sector last year. Uh, while only 16 cases have so far been reported in Vietnam, the economic fallout of the outbreak will be immense. Hallelujah. Three cheers for the coronavirus. Okay, what is going on with this major, uh, I call this either the trumping or bozo neuroing of uh, of Indonesia, where I guess is I guess this is this Joko Widodo just completely gutting and whatever the Joko environmental regulations uh, there deregulation in Indonesia economy first. Do you think so? sweeping changes being proposed under the Indonesian government's deregulation bill could prove even more disastrous for the environment than previously thought. <clears throat> the new legislation, and anybody who does not understand that this is the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative in action, this new legislation calls for stripping local governments of their power to issue permits for environmentally sensitive projects and handing that 
authority to the central government effectively a return to the power structure of the authoritarian new order area critics say the bill also prescribes lighter penalties for environmental violators including an end an end to criminal charges for palm oil plantation companies that set fire to their concessions to clear their land for planting. Wow, what a surprise. Uh, gee, and speaking of surprises, Iran upholds heavy sentences for conservationists convicted of spying. A court in Tehran this week upheld its guilty verdict for eight Iranians conservationists accused of spying with sentences ranging from four to ten years. The eight are affiliated with the Persian Wildlife Heritage Foundation, a Tehran-based conservation organization that works to save the critically endangered Asiatic cheetah. Uh, they have been in prison since 2018. One of them has already died in custody. Yep. That's what happens if you go up against the planet eaters taking aim at cheetahs, at critically endangered cheetahs. Uh, all right, Tyson Foods has committed to a no deforestation pledge. Yes, there you go. Tyson, the world's number two meat producer processor has announced it will commit to a policy of quote no deforestation no peatland no exploitation there you go uh, good for Tyson Foods all right let's see for can we get back to reality uh, all right, here is how social media, social media, such as right here on YouTube, uh, let's take the fight to social media uh, and protect endangered monkeys and apes. There you go. Uh, looking at the primate trade. All right, so let's all... Get on social media. Uh, we started out uh, in Indonesia. Let's just end up here because I really, I am running late, guys. I was supposed to be out of here four minutes ago. Let's end up in Indonesia looking at endangered deer. Nearly a quarter of the native population of Javan deer and 40% of introduced populations occur outside protected areas in Indonesia. <coughs> These non-protected areas include pulp wood and oil palm plantations and logging concessions and are therefore at much higher risk of being deforested than protected zones and we all know what that means for the Javan deer but anyway guys uh, I have got to wrap up this week's Manga Bay uh, roundup rant and uh, as much as this pains me to say I need to go pack up my gas sucking truck and head back to Texas uh, I hope I'm going to be able to uh, find time to uh, publish, to post my interview this week with uh, I, I'm Joao 
obrigado. I'm sorry, brother. I, well, uh, anyway, I uh, do look forward to my conversation with that young man. It's a good one coming up this weekend. And if you enjoyed what Rhett Butler and the folks at Manga Bay had to tell you about the state of the planet here at the close of February 2020, please spend a few seconds uh, voting up this video. If you did not like what Manga Bay had to tell you about the state of the planet, spend a few seconds voting it down. But by all means, while you're over here, guys, please subscribe to take a few seconds to subscribe to uh, Collapse Chronicles and then go over there to Manga Bay, M-O-N-G-A-B-A-Y, to their YouTube channel and subscribe over there as well and show them your support. And most importantly, get out there and enjoy this absolutely gorgeous day on the planet. And with that, I am going to join join the uh, the ants running back and forth up I-75. Are you ready to hit the road get back on I-75 into the madness? Bye, guys. Yes. I-75.